if you would not mind. Okay, so here is Cellucle. Clay. Cellu Clay is like a ready-made store product that is essentially paper mache. There is, it's kind of dusty. Um, it's well sealed in the Ziploc baggie. It's kind of dusty because it has paper pulp in it. Okay, so like, like crushed up paper pulp. It's got a little starch in it also. And so when you activate it with water, um, it becomes like this kind of paste. It, it, and you know that you mix the right uh, consistency when it feels like tuna, tuna salad kind of like, you know, like when you make a tuna fish sandwich, it kind of feels like that. Um, but this is a nice material to use because when you are, hope the recording um, can see my screen that I'm sharing, because when you work with it, uh, essentially it is very strong. Um, you know, ultimately when you're done with it, the hard shell can maintain its shape and form even if the armature is gone. So here is um, a before and after. So this was a skull that I was making for my beast. Um, and I had inside of here like a, a newspaper kind of armature. Um, and so I built, I put the cellucle around it and when it dried, I hollowed it out. I took out the newspaper and it was able to hold itself like this. So, um, you know, depending on the thickness, you may not be able to really cut it anymore. And once it does dry, while you're working on it, you do want to smooth it down because um, if you don't smooth it down, kind of like those sharp edges will harden and you, it, it's really hard to change that unless like you sand it and sand into it. And, and I don't want you to go and sand in your houses right now. So. Um, here is how we are going to be, um, here is how we're going to be, um, oops, uh, starting, we're going to keep our desks covered. And what you want to do is you want to make small batches at a time. Cause if you mix a big batch, yeah, you can kind of keep it in your refrigerator for maybe like a day, but it starts to harden. And, you know, if that's the worst that happens, fine, but. Um, if you forget about it, it will get really gnarly. So small batches are fine. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to use a kind of like Ziploc baggie um, and you will start to, um, I would start with like a small handful um, and you add a little bit of water at a time and you close the bag up and I'll show you how to do all of this so that, um, you know, not, no, none of the dust really comes out and around. And when it feels to be about tuna salad consistency, you know you're good. Now, if it got too wet um, and it was like just a little too hard to handle, and you'll know this because as you're spreading it on your sculpture, it doesn't really wanna stay, it just kind of wipes itself off, then, um, you know, just add a pinch of more dry cellulite to it. If you have a mask, please wear it uh, because it can get a little dusty, especially if you have like asthma or something. So, you know, just be careful not to like throw it all around. Okay. And again, this is not part of your um, materials list. This is something that if in the future you would like to try to use this as a paper mache sculpting material, I just want to share it with you. Okay. So here it is. Hold on. Let me pin my screen because yesterday I was making a video and then when students asked questions it kind of like stayed on their face for a while and I felt bad all right so again my cellulite I am not definitely not mixing all of this way too much I do have a smaller ziploc baggie and I am going to oops see whoa this dust came out already I'm gonna take my pen and move it out of the way. Keep my desk clear. Open my Ziploc baggie and I'm gonna kind of just gingerly take, you can see it, it's, it's, I can see like dust flying and I'm gonna just kind of move maybe a couple of handfuls. Probably want a little bit more, but just in case if you're not sure, you can do a little, you can do like this much and being very, very careful with it so that it's not too dusty everywhere in my house. All right, here we go. This is as much, this is a small sandwich baggie. It's not a lot. So I'm gonna take 
my big bag, close it up really well. And then my small baggie, I'm taking some water. I had some water next to me because, you know, can't take my laptop with me everywhere. And I will take a little bit of water. And I'm not gonna just like pull the, pour the whole thing in. I'm gonna just really, hopefully I don't get my computer wet either. Just a little bit of water at a time. Put this aside and I'll close my bag up before I start kind of mashing it around, okay? And at first, because the paper fibers, you know, they're pushing those paper fiber molecules are pushing away the water. It won't really want to adhere at first, but after a while, it does start soaking into those paper fibers. So now there's not really that much water, but I, I definitely do, yep. So you can make cellular clay from paper? I thought it was a product that you would buy. Yes. Oh, that's a wonderful question that you're asking. Okay, so while I'm mixing this, let me tell you. So for one of my, um, one of my installations, I had to actually make um, a giant, let me see. Where is my, is this it? I had to actually make a, a lot of trees. So I wanna show you what it could turn into. So I had to make a whole bunch of trees like this. They're life-size, there were like five of them, okay? And in making these, I will show you some close-ups. You see these beetles here? These were all cast and these, some of them were cast in um, a plastic that I had, but that got really expensive. So I figured out how to make my own cellulose. So this beetle here, you can see the textural difference. Maybe even this one is made with cellulose, but I didn't have, I was a grad student. I did not have a lot of money. So I had to make my own. And so what I did was I took newspaper, I cut them up into one inch squares and I soaked them in water. So, and you know what happens when you put something in water, it'll really kind of fall apart. And after it's soaked for a bit, I put the whole thing in. So also guys, you are gonna have to write a lot. You're gonna have to write a lot, a lot, a lot as being an artist. Um, you know, it's not just about making artwork. Um, some of these dragonfly wings were cast with black glue guns. So here it is, here's some more beetles. Um, so I took the um, soaked newspaper in a blender with plenty of water and um, a little bit of potato starch, because remember the cellulose has a starch, that's the agent that's going to make it hard. And um, I blended it. I broke my mother's blender. I am not going to lie. It, it, like I used it so much that it broke. Um, it will be a little bit too watery, so you put it in a strainer. Um, and you basically let the excess out and then you can use it the same way that I am using it. I'm gonna show you how to use it today. Anyway, it looks like I have a lot of the same photos. These are really old. So um, I do not have these trees or these insects or bugs anymore because you know we live in New York, there's no space. So this is all in the garbage now. Anyway, just wanted to show you like an application of that. All right. Um, so here is my, it's still, there's a lot of dry parts. So I'm going to continue adding a little bit more water to it. Close that up again. Cause at this point I'm thinking this is plenty for me to use in this one hour class and probably we don't even have an hour anymore. And I actually definitely want to keep the bag closed until I don't really see any dry parts or not too much. Okay, so here it is. I'm, I'm, what I can see in here is that there's, most of it is pretty wet. Um, and I can kind of tell before I even put my hands in here that it's still not, uh, it's still like a little dry and it's not really tuna salad, tuna fish um, salad. 
consistency. So now, now that there's not too much dust or anything coming out, I left the bag open because it'll help me uh, mix it without having that big like air bubble inside. So here we go. Mmm, tuna fish salad. Okay. And sometimes when you're doing this, if you feel like a little hard nugget, that means that there's a ball of dried cellulite inside the wet ball. So you do want to like really make it even. All right. So what do you do with this? You ready? Now I am going to turn my camera down to my desk. Here is my sculpture. And, you know, let's experiment and see, will this stay on wire? It's going to be harder. You probably do want to have a little bit of some other paper mache happening. So now if I wanted to build a little mass to this plaster roll that I tried, or even to this, I would want to, this using the cellulite would help. Or if I had like, um, you know, um, an armature that I built out of like, I, I, I balled up some newspaper, um, I can do that too. So hopefully you can see this. I'm taking this and if you have the right consistency, it'll be easy for you to just kind of press down and spread. If it's too watery, you press down and then it'll kind of like wipe itself off the surface. And doing this is nice because I can actually, you know, correct, correct the surface a little. So if I want it to be, maybe like, I'm gonna give this thing some, turn my camera on the side. Maybe I want it to have some like uh, ridges, like a dinosaur. I can actually sculpt and build this up a little bit more. And again, you know, I know you don't have these, but if you wanted to ever experiment with cellulite, this is a nice way to work with it. So I can definitely work on being a little bit more descriptive about the final form of the sculpture. You can sand it down when it's done, um, but you know, again, like we're indoors all the time. So if you have an outdoor space, you can, you can definitely sand it down afterwards. Um, and please wear, do wear a mask because it still can get dusty. Um, you know, I would say definitely the most helpful thing still is to make sure that you uh, smooth it down as much as possible. And what's nice about this is that it's porous and you can glue things on with your liquid glue afterwards. You can glue stuff on here. Um, if I had some of my organic objects. Remember those organic objects I asked you guys to start finding? So here I have some fuzzy willows. I'm just experimenting. I, I don't really know. I don't know if this is gonna work towards the concept of my sculpture, but it's okay, the concept drawings that I did. So here are some fuzzy willows. And if I wanted to, I can even take this while the cellulite clay is wet and add it to the surface. These are super dried out. Oopsie, come back. Probably be easier if I mounded up the cellulite a little bit more. But I just want to give you like opportunities and um, you know, options for working on your sculpture. Because remember, we're now we're at this point where we have a lot of different techniques at hand and we're just gonna be a little creative and see what we can make from this. Okay, so I can do this with my fuzzy willows right, and start to like think about this texture. Um, and I can continue to take my cellulite. Look how much cellulite I still have left. Oops, knocked it off my... I have so much left, even after doing all of this. So a little bit goes a long way. So don't feel uh, pressure to really make a lot of cellulite all at once. Because remember, it's really hard to kind of reuse and you can always quickly mix some more. So I can continue and I can um, really emphasize the ridges of the spine 
Remember I said that the, in my vacuum cleaner, the handle becomes the spine and I can use the cellulite if I wanted to, to really emphasize this kind of like bone ridges. Okay, so that is a very quick demo on cellulite. And you know, if you hate it, you don't have to use it because it's not part of your materials list and it's just here for you just in case you're thinking about some alternatives to building. Um, if we were in school, I would definitely have this for you guys to use, but unfortunately, you know, this year, this is what we got going. Anyway, so this is how you claim. Thank you for watching. How long does it take to dry? Again, that's a great question, Norma. Um, you know, it depends on how dry your home is, you know, so if, if you like put it outside right now when it's kind of like, you know, cold or a little wet, it's going to take longer to dry. And if you put it closer to maybe like a heater, not directly on top of a heater, because you never want to do that, guys, never, ever, ever, because you can get a fire, but like, you know, close to like a heater, um, it will dry a little bit faster. It also depends on how thick you applied the cellulite. Um, I would give it a few hours. Um, maybe it would probably take a little bit longer than your um, tissue paper mache. I'm just using my water cup to clean my hands, sorry. All right, so that is my demo. I will post this onto Google Classroom. You guys can look at it. Uh oh, what is going on here? Sorry guys, my hand was wet and my mouse is all over the place. Okay, goodbye. Nope, don't worry about saving it. Here we go, all right. Am I still sharing my screen? Okay, I'm gonna stop my sh 